was the longest suspension bridge in the world at that time. And it cost $320 million to build. It has 8 million bolts and rivets. It has more steel than the Empire State Building. It has 142,000 miles of twisted wire that makes up those massive cables that hold the suspension bridge up. The impact on Staten Island is still being felt and will continue to be felt for time. For me, a, a kid in Brooklyn, watching this bridge being built, it was like, wow. Already a thing of beauty, spanning the narrows at the mouth of the Port of New York, the Verrazano Bridge, as it nears completion, again becomes an exciting subject for your newsreel cameraman. I grew up on the other side of uh, the Verrazano Bridge in Brooklyn and actually was able to see the bridge being built. It was an amazing feat to sit there on my front porch and see this structure go up. I was a young boy at the time, but a lot of the neighborhood was destroyed to make way for both the bridge and for the highway that would connect the bridge to the Gowanus Parkway. So that had an effect on the people of, of Brooklyn as well. So a lot of families were uprooted, but it had a, an enormous impact on the borough of Staten Island. The population of Staten Island in 1960 was 21,991. Ten years later, in 1970, the population jumped to almost 300,000. And the big push was when the Verrazano Bridge was built in 1964. When you increase capacity, you increase utilization. People poured into the borough. And it just keeps growing. And it's the fastest growing county in the state of New York. It has dramatically changed the face of the, of the borough. <laughs> change is difficult for anybody. But it changed here, I think, on Staten Island where so dramatic in such a short period of time, you open up the bridge and you open up the floodgates and people came running across the bridge. I think the people realized that it was going to change their lifestyle forever. I don't think they realized, I don't think anyone realized to the extent it would change it. 